Hey guys, I want to talk to you about the AMD Threadripper 3970X. It's a high-end desktop CPU aimed at content creators. It has 32 cores and a single core boost clock frequency of 4.5 gigahertz. And that means it's going to be excellent for modeling in ZBrush as well as rendering. Now, I was able to get the one that came in stock at a local micro center shortly after launch. And people have been asking me how well it performs in ZBrush. So I figured I'd make this video. I hope it helps. So let's take a look at performance. When I sculpt on this sphere, you'll see that this core is doing all the work. And that's because the brush function only operates on one core. And that's why we need that core to be as fast as possible. So the 3970X will boost that core up to 4.5 gigahertz, giving us an incredible interactive performance when we sculpt. And this is only an 11 million polygon sphere. Obviously, people work with higher polygon counts than this. So let's take a look at a more complicated model. So here's a model I'm working on for a personal project. It's made up of several subtools and combined it's 170 million polygons on screen at 4K resolution. Keep an eye on the threads while I rotate the model in the viewport. Notice how all the cores engage to help render this model. Rotating, panning, and zooming is very interactive on the 3970X. Threadrippers are excellent at multi-threaded operations such as rendering, but the real surprise here is the single-threaded performance. Sculpting is fast on the 3970X, and it's very responsive. We could easily go up to higher polygon counts and still have plenty of performance left. Now this is only a 15 million polygon subtool, and it's likely you'll be working with higher polygon counts. But it's worth pointing out that even at 15 million polygons, the sculpting thread is only using about 10% of its core. We just have to give it more to do, so let's give it more polygons. This ear subtool is about 17.7 .7 million polygons. I'm going to subdivide it up to 71 million polygons. And you're going to see that the brush is just as responsive as a 15 million polygon object. Some brushes will perform better than others. I'll get to that in a moment, but the biggest issue at 71 million polygons is actually the undo and redo performance. It's quite slow. Hiding portions of your model that you're not working on will actually improve the undo and redo performance. This will also increase modeling performance as well. Now, of course, 71 million polygons is a lot to work with, so some brushes do lag. Now, it depends on the size. Clay buildup brush, for example, at a very small size with a fast stroke begins to lag. However, the standard brush performs quite well at the same size. A fast stroke with the standard brush is quite responsive. In our previous example, we used a 71 million polygon object. Here we're working with 32 million polygons. And just like the 71 million polygon object, the clay buildup brush at a small size lags. You can improve brush performance by increasing the lazy step value. This will help on high polygon models. And we can see that performance has improved on our 71 million polygon object. Now that we've seen how well brushes perform, let's take a look at projections. I'm going to transfer details of this model to this model. And you're going to see all the cores engage. Now this is only a 4 million polygon object for the sake of time. But what's important here is ZBrush is using 100% of the CPU and it's using all the cores to project and transfer detail. This will speed up my workflow considerably. And there you go, it's done. Now let's take a look at Decimation Master. Now I'm working with a 1 million polygon object just for the sake of time. So let's hit preprocess current, and you'll see that all the threads or cores engage, but we're only getting about 20% CPU usage. So some of the cores are about 5%, some about 30%. But uh, overall, the 3970X is using all the cores, just not at 100% efficiency. So pre-processing is complete at 1 million polygons. It finished at 14 seconds. By the way, 4 million polygons takes 56 seconds. And so here's the decimated result. There you go. Now that we've decimated our object, let's generate some new topology with Z-Remesher and see how well the 3970X performs. All the cores engage briefly, but most of the work is being done by two threads. Unfortunately, z Remesher isn't as multi-threaded as we would like, but the single core frequency of the 3970X still gives us a quick result. 
Now that we have new geometry, let's insert an NMesh. The 3970X is doing an excellent job here. All cores are engaging at 4K resolution. Now it does depend on the complexity of the NanoMesh you're inserting, but performance is very good here. Let's unwrap our model with UV Master. This is a 60,000 polygon object. As you can see, UV Master isn't as multi-threaded as we would like. However, thanks to the Threadripper single core performance, the unwrap should finish fairly quickly. And we're almost finished. And there we go, we'll flatten the result. Now let's take a look at rendering. The Threadripper is, of course, excellent at rendering. Here we see all the cores engaging, 32 cores, 64 threads, 100% CPU usage. The 3970X is a rendering monster. These high core count CPUs, they're so good at crunching numbers like this. Here we are 4K in Keyshot, and this render is a final render. It's gonna take about two minutes and 45 seconds to finish. And hopefully that'll give me enough time here to summarize my experience with the AMD Threadripper 3970X. The chip is incredible. There's nothing like it. Uh, we've seen high core count CPUs before for rendering, but this one models, animates, plays games. It's very good at single threaded workloads as well as high core count multi-threaded workloads. So if you're thinking about upgrading and you're looking for the best, I highly recommend the 3970X. Now there is a 64 core Threadripper coming soon, the 3990X. And based on the performance of this CPU, I cannot wait to see how well it performs. It does have a lower frequency. It has a boost clock frequency of 4.3 gigahertz as compared to 4.5 gigahertz on this chip. So I think the 3970X will probably be the better chip for animating and modeling, but the 64 core will be a beast when it comes to crunching numbers like rendering and I expect a single thread performance to be quite good. That's the nature of these AMD CPUs right now. They deliver high core counts and excellent single thread performance. So as you can see, the render is almost complete, and I'm gonna close out the video by saying thank you for watching, keep creating, and I'll see you on the next one.